Uh, as Christina said, uh, this topic, I'm sorry to say, is certainly timely. Uh, we are definitely uh, in the Great Recession, and uh, by the looks of what's happened the past month or so, um, it doesn't look like we're uh, getting out of it at all, and I fear we may be going back in it. Everything I'm hearing about uh, next year is being referred to as the cliff, um, as in uh, over the edge of the cliff. And that uh, suggests to me that uh, colleges and universities need uh, these so-called college success or student success or first-year seminar courses more than ever. Uh, the worst thing you could do right now would be to cut back on this kind of effort. Um, I appreciated the kind uh, introduction of me, uh, and I want to move to this slide, which says, uh, I think the most simple but probably the most profound thing I could say today, and that is that the first year matters, or the new student experience matters, however you might want to say that. I realize on community college campuses, uh, many students have a first term, not a first year, um, and uh, so use the language that fits best. But I, I'm opening with a slide because uh, you constantly have to remind people on your campus why the first year matters. So you cannot assume they understand that, and you need to spell that out. And once they get it in terms of why the new student experience matters, uh, then the, the next leap or segue is to why a course like this matters because of its impact on improving the first year. Uh, most all public institutions are not looking uh, at any increases in funding next year, and they're actually looking at decreases. And the only way... Uh, they are going to make up that revenue is through increased retention, which is a, uh, a very widespread byproduct of students participating in these courses. In addition, and even more importantly, uh, the students need our assistance more than ever. They are truly bearing the uh, stress of the Great Recession. And, uh, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, the slides were not moving, so I'm actually going to move them for you. I was able to move them. I, I I don't know what is happening. Okay, well, fine. So we've got the first year matters then. I hope everybody's seeing that, uh, where I'm urging you to remind others on your campus that the first year matters and why. So uh, let's advance. Do you see the meaning, maintaining momentum? I'm calling here maintaining momentum in hard times and through the, uh, the use of assessment. You asked me today, anyway, uh, what do I think um, was the most important reason why um, I was able to lead a first-year seminar course and have that course endure and flourish for 25 years, or for that matter, why anybody else could do that, even not so close to it. So for me, certainly is. Uh, viable course and have an even viable course today at the University of South Carolina because of our very strong of our course in 1972. Uh, we have been constantly studying its effectiveness and reporting uh, what we've learned. So my point here is that even in the best times, but now especially choices are being made about which initiatives are going to get the uh, Rigorous assessment is needed more than ever. Now, it's not enough assessment. You have to uh, tell people in the larger college family or university family what it is supposed to do as a result of that assessment. You're going to use the data uh, to bring about education. John, um, I think we might have a this, uh, bad phone connection with you. Um, or you're, you're fading in and out a little bit. Um, I don't know what to do about that. Um, I really don't. Um, okay. Well, I mean, we can proceed. It sounds pretty good right now, but um, just aware of it. Kind of yeah, okay. I'm sorry about that, folks. Um, uh, well, at least you have the printed copy here of the um, the PowerPoint, and hopefully you'll be able to get a flavor of what I'm trying to say. Uh, and and I, I was making really a simple but a very profound point that it's not enough to do the assessment. You have to apply 
the lessons gleaned from the assessment and share with others what those lessons are and what you did with those lessons. Um, another thing that you need to be doing now, I believe, in your assessment is you've got to be able to measure and then report to others what's actually costing you to deliver these courses. What kinds of outcomes are you getting that connect to revenue generation? rates of students who take this course, and you need to be able to translate that into revenue. And I, I must confess, I find this uh, notion of translating student progress into uh, numbers like this, uh, monetary numbers, uh, anathema, but it's the only thing that's speaking to many of the decision makers right now. I, I guess we've reached the point that we all need to be like our fellow educators in the province of uh, Ontario in Canada were instead of referring to FTEs, full-time equivalent students, they refer to BIUs, and a BIU is a basic income unit, uh, which is a, uh, the equivalent of our FTE. Anyway, if you are interested in how you might go about um, measuring the costs of your program and reporting outcomes, I urge you to see the work of Jane Wellman, who runs something called the Delta Project, which is a nonprofit organization based in uh, Washington. She's a labor economist, and her work and research has focused on assessment of um, the financial impact of these uh, first-year initiatives. Um, let's advance the slide, uh, Christina, and uh, I'd like to s offer some suggestions about how, because of hard times, you may wish or you may need to make some structural changes in your course to adjust to the changing economic circumstances. Uh, much as I hate to say this, um, increasing class size, of course, uh, is an option. Uh, if you do that, I think it's more important.